This is the third tutorial in a series on converting a game made for the Blender game engine to a web-based game engine. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to score 10 points for collecting a ruby and 20 points for collecting an emerald. Up to now, I haven't used any code, but in this tutorial I have to use JavaScript to implement the game logic. The starting point for this tutorial is the file made in the previous tutorial. You can download the file from my website or you can use your own models to make a similar game. Select the first Ruby. I'm going to change the name to ruby.000 to be consistent in the naming of the rubies. The Z rotational value is yellow because there is a keyframe. The keyframes make the ruby spin. For the ruby to spin in a web browser, click apply default animation. Do the same for the other gems. I'm also going to rename the emerald, even though at the moment there aren't any duplicates. Click the physics properties, click object physics, leave the physics type as static, click collision bounds and change the collision shape to cylinder. For this game, I don't want a hard collision, so I'm going to click ghost. Do the same for the other gems. For the JavaScript coding, we have to give each gemstone a unique collision ID. Ruby 01 and Ruby 02 and Emerald 00. Click Render Properties. The Blender file is now ready. Next, I'm going to create a project using Blend for Web's Project Manager. Click Hide Stop Projects and create new project. I'm going to call the new project My Driving Game 1. Scroll down and click Create Project. Wait for Project Created to appear and then click Back to Project. The new project will have a dummy Blender file and a dummy JSON file. We need to overwrite the Blender file and use it to overwrite the JSON file. Going back to Blender, File, Save As, go to the Blend for Web folder, the Projects folder, the My Driving Game 1 folder, Blender, click on the dummy Blender file and click Save As to overwrite it. To overwrite the JSON file, file export blend for web JSON. Make sure you're in the project's driving game assets folder. Click on the JSON file and click export to overwrite it. Next, I'm going to copy over the code that makes the game work. Going back to project manager, clicking the edit link and clicking the link for the JavaScript file, the .js file. Here I have the finished listing of the JavaScript file, which you can download from my website. We could just overwrite the JavaScript file, and provided the name of the project is the same, it should work. But it doesn't take long to copy over the additional code and it's a good exercise. So I'm highlighting the extra modules used. 
a global variable score and a constant end score, right click copy, click right click and paste. Going back to the listing, scroll down to where it says place your code here, highlight the code that controls the car and highlight the calls to the functions that make the game work, right click and copy. Back in Project Manager, scroll to the end, click and right click and paste and I'm going to put two slashes to comment out the enable camera controls. Finally, highlight the functions. Right click and copy. Click. Right click and paste. Click Save Project and Back to Projects. Click the link for the web page, the HTML page, and hope that it all works. If it doesn't, my tutorial on using the web console for basic debugging could help. As the car hits the rubies, 10 is added to the score. When it hits the emerald, 20 is added to the score. When all the gems have been collected, the level is complete. In a previous tutorial, I showed how to make a game where a simple car collided with Coke cans. In the tutorial, I explained what the code did. I used the code from the Coke game and edited it to make the gems game. Next, I'm going to go through the changes that I made. The first thing I had to change was the name of the car body. In the simple car, it's called chassis. And in the gems game, the body of the car is called car. It doesn't matter what it's called in the script, but the name here must match the blender file. Next, three collision sensors are created which fire when the chassis collides with an object with the specified collision ID. It was easy to replace Coke with a ruby for the three rubies, but another sensor was needed for the emerald. The sensor array is a list of all the sensors that can affect the calling of the callback function, I had to remember to add the emerald sensor to the list. The sensor logic function specifies how the output from the sensors is combined to call the callback function. If the first sensor or the second sensor or the third sensor and I had to add or the fourth sensor become positive, the callback function is called. Array indexes start at zero. This is the first element in the array, it has an index zero. This is the second element, it has an index one, and so on. Here are the array indexes for the sensor array. If the first sensor becomes one, we know to remove the first Coke can. It's the same for the rubies, but when the index becomes 3, the fourth element, we remove the emerald. All the Coke cans scored 1 point, but with the gemstones, the rubies score 10 and the emeralds score 20. With 3 Coke cans, the end score was set to 3. With 3 rubies and 1 emerald, the end score was set to 50. And finally, the creation of the sensor manifold, which links the sensors to the callback function. The only change necessary was the name of the car body.
that's the end of this tutorial. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. To visit my website, click the eye icon in the top right hand corner. I'll also put a link to the Coke Can tutorial there. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stick man. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the patron link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.